Is SpaceX going to move its Hawthorne manufacturing operations to Texas? Not really. We all know that with tax burdens, overregulation, and litigation driving the decision to relocate its headquarters, the company still maintains operations in California. This creates a fascinating paradox. Leaving while staying, even though any remaining employees in California will continue to pay the state's personal income tax. So, what's holding SpaceX back from fully committing to Texas? What strategy lies behind their dual presence in these two states? Dive into today's episode as we unravel the complexities of SpaceX's operations and explore what the future might hold. Anyway, thank you for helping us reach 90,000 subscribers. Our next goal is 100,000, and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. SpaceX has long been tied to its headquarters in Hawthorne, California, since its founding in 2002. Initially, SpaceX operated out of a small warehouse in El Second, California, but in 2007, it moved its headquarters to a larger facility in Hawthorne, which was previously used for manufacturing Boeing 747 fuselages. This location provided ample space for the company's growing operations and allowed for significant expansion. The 1 million square foot building serves as the company's mission control center and employs thousands of workers who design and build the company's spacecraft including the Workhorse Falcon 9 and Dragon Capsule. It had then expanded quickly. Most of the company's expansion occurred from 2014 to 2016. That's when the company began to notch a number of milestones, such as a $440 million NASA contract to develop spacecraft as part of the commercial crew program. These fruitful encouraged the company to hire hundreds more employees and Hawthorne officials expected to receive a total of about $600,000 annually in fees from the business, once its expansion was complete. This led to a deal between the city and SpaceX to keep headquarters in Hawthorne through 2022, as long as the city reduces certain taxes on the business as promised. The agreement included a $260,000 cap on annual business license fees. That allowed the company to maintain a flat tax rate as it grew larger. However, that preferential treatment can't eliminate a fact that Elon Musk's relationship with California has become increasingly strained. It is marked by criticisms of the state's regulatory environment and recent legislation that he perceives as detrimental to families and businesses. The business environment in California characterized by high taxes and stringent regulations, has influenced Musk's strategic decisions. Therefore, he finally decided to relocate the headquarters of SpaceX and other ventures out of California, particularly to Texas. Take for example, at the end of 2021, Tesla officially moved its headquarters to Austin, Texas. The move helps to position Tesla closer to its manufacturing operations and tapping into the burgeoning tech ecosystem in Texas. Austin has emerged as a competitive hub for technology, attracting talent and investment away from Silicon Valley. In 2024, it's SpaceX's turn to move. For a long time, Musk has highly appreciated the Lone Star State's alluring business-friendly climate. With no state income tax and fewer regulations, Texas offers a fertile ground for innovation allowing Musk to realize ambitious projects like Utopia, a residential community for SpaceX and the boring company employees. The lower cost of living not only attracts top talent, but also aligns with Musk's recent political leanings, creating a perfect storm for growth. However, while SpaceX's headquarters is no longer in California, its manufacturing facilities and launch sites remain particularly Hawthorne Manufacturing Operations facilities and SpaceX's West Coast launch sites located at Vandenberg. This reflects that the company will continue to be subject to overregulation and overtax in California, even if it relocates its headquarters. So, why doesn't SpaceX consider moving manufacturing from Hawthorne to Texas? 
Honestly, SpaceX wants to maintain facilities in both California and Texas to tap into distinct talent pools. California, particularly the Los Angeles area, is home to a vast talent pool with deep expertise in aerospace engineering and technology. SpaceX benefits from this concentration of skilled workers, many of whom have experience with major aerospace firms like Northrop Grumman and Lockheed Martin. This talent is essential for SpaceX's ambitious projects, including the development of advanced rockets and spacecraft. Meanwhile, Texas, particularly Austin, is emerging as a tech hotspot with a growing workforce interested in aerospace and engineering roles. Employees may experience higher satisfaction due to the flexibility offered by dual locations. If talents are disillusioned with California's high housing costs and taxes, they can move to the lower cost of living and business-friendly environment in Texas. And SpaceX employees who are accustomed to certain lifestyles in Southern California can easily stay. In addition, the dual locations may foster a unique company culture that blends the innovation-driven ethos of Silicon Valley with the more laid-back, entrepreneurial spirit of Texas, appealing to a broader range of employees. Nearly two decades in the Golden State has fostered strong ties between SpaceX and key organizations, including NASA. These relationships are vital for collaboration on projects that advance American human spaceflight capabilities. The proximity to established aerospace companies and governmental agencies enhances opportunities for partnerships, contracts, and shared resources. Not to mention SpaceX is competing for military contracts to launch on the West Coast, so they have to maintain their presence in California. Facilities like Vandenberg Space Force Base enable SpaceX to conduct polar orbit launches, which are essential for satellite deployments. The existing infrastructure reduces the need for significant investment in new facilities, allowing SpaceX to leverage what is already available in the region. SpaceX's role in California is also significant. And of course, California officials are concerned about the negative impact of SpaceX's relocation. First and foremost, it is about job losses and effects on local suppliers. The departure of SpaceX would likely result in substantial job losses in Hawthorne and surrounding areas. SpaceX employs approximately 6,000 workers in California, many of whom are skilled professionals in aerospace engineering and manufacturing. The loss of such a major employer could lead to increased unemployment rates, particularly in the aerospace sector, which has been revitalized by SpaceX's presence. This could have a cascading effect on local economies, as laid-off workers may struggle to find comparable employment in a region where aerospace jobs are already limited. A move could have big implications for small businesses that have come to rely on the thousands of people who work at the site, for example, restaurants or shops. A California restaurant owner was shocked to learn that billionaire Elon Musk is planning to move SpaceX headquarters to Texas. She is on a first-name basis with countless SpaceX employees who frequently dine at the fabulous grill in Hawthorne. Business has been slow since the pandemic, but her relationship with its employees has helped keep the lights on in recent years. It's scary because I have a lot of business with them, she said. If they leave, I don't know what's going to happen to us. Hawthorne Mayor Alex Vargas highlights the city's relationship with SpaceX, saying, Businesses are constantly looking to relocate to Hawthorne, with SpaceX and the Hawthorne Airport Corridor as the key point of synergy. SpaceX's footprint in Hawthorne and Southern California is huge, experts said, so moving to Texas will be complicated and not overnight. You don't just shudder and walk away from a major aerospace facility without thinking super seriously, said Peter Westwick, who teaches history at the University of Southern California. He described the region as the global epicenter of aviation and aerospace for the last hundred years. Now, supply shops for equipment are readily available for companies like SpaceX, and employees have become accustomed to certain lifestyles in Southern California that they may not want to leave. Beyond direct and indirect job losses, reduced innovation and collaboration between companies is also a big problem. Frankly, 
the competitive landscape of California's aerospace sector encourages innovation and collaboration among companies. Fortunately, SpaceX's presence in California has been a catalyst for the growth of a vibrant aerospace ecosystem, inspiring numerous startups to establish themselves in the region. As noted by industry experts, SpaceX's innovative approach and success have revitalized Southern California's aerospace sector, leading to the emergence of over 400 startups in areas like El Segundo, all closely linked to space technology and engineering. This concentration of companies benefits from the local talent pool, which includes many former SpaceX employees who have gone on to launch their own ventures. There are questions about the future of SpaceX's California facilities as the Starship program progresses and is expected to replace the Falcon and Dragon spacecraft. The manufacturing operations in Hawthorne are crucial for designing and building Falcon rockets, Dragon spacecraft, and Merlin engines. SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell has indicated that Starship will take over from Falcon 9 within the next six to eight years, prompting speculation about whether the Hawthorne site will be closed at that time. However, I believe that even after this transition, SpaceX will maintain a significant engineering and corporate presence in California due to the advantages the region offers. What are your thoughts? Do you think SpaceX will continue its operations on the West Coast? Share your opinion in the comments. Starship, SpaceX's fully reusable rocket, is anticipated to be more cost-effective and capable of carrying larger payloads than both the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. By eliminating the disposal of any rocket components post-launch, Starship aims to significantly reduce launch costs potentially reaching as low as $10 million per launch once operational efficiency is optimized. This price is a stark contrast to the $70 million charge for a Falcon 9 launch, making it an attractive option for customers. In terms of payload capacity, the next iteration, Starship version 2, is designed to carry over 100 tons into orbit, while the upcoming Starship Block 3 is expected to exceed 200 tons, unprecedented figures in the aerospace industry. For comparison, the Falcon Heavy can only transport 63.8 tons to low Earth orbit in expendable mode, and NASA's Space Launch System has a capacity of about 130 tons. Elon Musk envisions that if Starship is launched frequently enough, it could handle over 99% of all Earth payloads sent to orbit a critical requirement for establishing a self-sustaining city on Mars. Musk estimates that building such a city would necessitate transporting at least a million tons of equipment, costing upwards of $1 trillion, a figure that dwarfs the current U.S. GDP of $29 trillion. However, he believes advancements in rocket technology could reduce this cost by a factor of 1,000 making colonization feasible at around $1 trillion spread over 40 years, equating to less than $25 billion annually, an amount that would not significantly impact living standards on Earth. Starship's design incorporates a reusable booster and a multi-purpose spacecraft capable of transporting astronauts and cargo not just to LEO, but also to the Moon and Mars. In contrast, Falcon 9 primarily delivers satellites and crewed missions into orbit. Additionally, Starship is equipped for suborbital missions that could revolutionize global travel by enabling rapid point-to-point -point transportation across the planet in under an hour. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.